We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? It's time for another good idea, bad idea. Good idea. Hey, welcome back to a really great world. It's time for Stop. another good idea. <laughs> Stop We that. are caught in the good idea loop. <laughs> Stop that. Yeah. Stop that right now. If only that were true. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely not. So, <laughs> I will, uh... Why did it even do that? It doesn't even do that. It's not supposed to do that. Anyway, moving right along. Okay. Uh, so, welcome to Good Ideas for O'Reilly Radio Show 131D, uh, recorded Friday, November 4th, 2016. Dismantle current events for your entertainment through rational, mostly rational conversations that make you go O'Reilly. Oh, I'm your host, Andy Cowan. Usual suspects, David O'Connor, Stephen Griffith, and Amber Bissecker. Welcome back. Okay, so... Um, you had uh, you, you had that story. Somebody put it in there. Not sure if we wanted to go with it. We're going to go with it. Yeah, I threw that in there. But down here, so let's <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about that here. So um, that first? more yeah more in the um, <laughs> more in the elections. We've we've had that problem with the whole emails, as we've said ad, ad nauseum at this point. Uh, where those emails are coming from has been a combination of places. A lot have come from WikiLeaks, but where is WikiLeaks getting them? So they're thinking that it's a combination of government hackers, either China or most likely Russia. So that's that's where we get a lot of the, the Russian ties with Putin. So US government hackers are ready to hit back if Russia tries to disrupt the election. Do you think they can do it, guys? Do you think they can do it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Samantha we... B. Act I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, so my, my thing was, mm -hmm. we, we created a virus that destroyed uh, uranium centrifuges that were not connected to a network. They they had an air gap network. Allegedly, we a, allegedly we did that. Allegedly we did that. Allegedly yeah, we, we were we part of that. the Stuxnet <laughs> thing. Allegedly, this, this thing was so far beyond <laughs> virus; it was nearly alive. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we can was we can do some we can do some stuff to Russia if we really put our minds to it. Well, yeah, that's where I look at and go, U.S. U.S. cybersecurity has been mostly on the back foot doing defensive work for most of this entire time. We don't do that much active stuff and active attacks because that's not really where we go. We don't need to. The countries we are, quote-unquote, at war with don't have the infrastructure for a cyber attack to be effective at all if they have an infrastructure. Um, so they've all been, all these hackers and all these different groups and government agencies have just been, okay, we're just doing defensive stuff, we're protecting things, we're trying to keep these attacks from occurring on these locations. If Russia decides to... Uh, let, let, me, let me be the chest here. If Russia decides to step up a little bit, decides to try to, you know, tussle with us, they're going to mm -hmm. find out, well, America did invent the internet for a reason. And mm -hmm. our guys will probably be able to just tear theirs to pieces. We would literally shut down major portions of their infrastructure. It would cause a mini depression in the Russian economy. Short term. It would be bad. <laughs> like, Your opinion, Andy. We could do some terrible things. <clears throat> well, according to the article out on NBC News, uh, U.S. officials continue to express concern that Russia will use its cyber capabilities to try to disrupt next week's presidential elections. U.S. intelligence officials do not expect Russia to attack critical infrastructure, which many believe would be an act of war, but they do anticipate so-called cyber mischief, including the possible release of fake documents and the proliferation of bogus social media accounts designed to spread misinformation. On Friday, the hacker known as Guccifer 2.0 I've obviously mispronounced that because that's what I Gucci do. Gucci fur? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Go with Gucci fur. Sure. Yeah. We'll go with that. Which U.S. officials say is a front for Russian intelligence, tweeted a threat to monitor the U.S. elections from the inside of the system. 
I've added the laughter for effect. The NBC News reported uh, Thursday, U.S. government is marshalling resources to combat the threat. Um, now, I'm, I'm with you that we've got some really smart people. We do, however, have a lot of different agencies that don't always play well with each other and compete with each other for resources, attention, information, all of it. Um, so in many ways, we are our own worst enemy in, in this field. Mm -hmm. So is the presidential election a matter of national security? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the NSA would be involved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can, well, I, I can tell you that off the top of my head, no problem. The FBI is only allowed to deal with things on domestic soil. Mm -hmm. They would be less involved unless the perpetrator came from within the United States. Or from a U.S. embassy. Or from a U.S. embassy. Then you've got the, C the CIA, which is not allowed to deal with anything on domestic soil. So they are obviously interested in everything that's going on everywhere else. Because that's what they're tasked to do. So really the two main organizations that are going to be involved with any Russia hacking, we're never going to hear anything about because they're spy organizations. Again, we'll only hear about it if they screw up. Well, I think something else that's interesting to, <clears throat> to mention that the article that you're reading from also mentioned mm -hmm. was that they may not really have to have any kind of formal uh, hacking attempts on the U.S. because um, Samantha Bee actually did a segment on this in one of her most recent shows mm -hmm. where a lot of um, the people that are being hired um, to sow misinformation and everything like that are doing it on social media and the things that they're posting like the false documents and, and conspiracies and things like that are being picked up by media outlets that are being picked up by places like Breitbart repeated by Donald Trump so they don't really have to necessarily do any real hacking all they have to do is and they talked about how many different uh, Twitter accounts they had how many different Facebook accounts they had yeah. um, in order to, to do this, and one of the one of them was a woman, and she's like, "Yeah, it, you know, uh, online, I'm a 36 year old uh, soccer mom from Nebraska, and everybody listens to me when I talk about you know this stuff." And Samantha B was like, "Why? Why do you think people believe you?" And this Russian woman was like, "They're lazy. They, they believe everything they read." If you if you put yourself, I mean, it is a type. It's stereotyping, and I I was in a conversation last night, a little uh, a little verbal <laughs> tete a tete uh, with a conservative radio uh, talk show host, and <laughs> and he was so easy to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I just said a couple key words, poked at a couple things that he said, and I got him going. He never said anything substantive, but I didn't expect him to. Because again, stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I already knew what to expect from him, even if I'd never dealt with him before. Did you record this? Because I, I would love to see this <laughs> in a, in a special. Yeah, I'm. I'm very intrigued. I, I, I want this. We need this. It, need it, this it's, my life. it's just. It's just text. It's just text, and it's on a friend's page, so I'm not. I'm not gonna. Not gonna pull it up. But um, yeah, it was. It was interesting. Um. It basically, he just he fell into some things, and I just called him on it, and then he was aghast, and then just, it rolled from there. Um, amazingly enough, he doesn't like Trump either, but, you know, still, a lot of people don't. It's mostly, I hate Hillary, therefore Trump, um, or Gary Johnson, or other oh, spoiler. Oh, God. Yeah, so. Jill yeah. Stein, the only technology we need is crystals. And she's a doctor. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> really? Just remember. Anyway. Staring at your TV will give you cancer. <laughs> what kind of TV, though? Is it a plasma? Is it an LED? Is it anyway? <clears throat> <clears throat> still the cathode don't, ray. Don't tubes. go there, Andy. From, uh, don't go there, Andy. You don't want to go there. The Micro control waves. I know. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 
Obey. Chemtrails. Obey. Obey. Chemtrails. Chemtrails. <laughs> it's always the chemtrails. Those always darn chemtrails. Always trying to control your brain. And so, the hacker known as 4 <clears throat> Yeah. For, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> back to hacking. Thank you very much for bringing it back around. Wow. You're very good at this. You're very good at this, I will say. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> I definitely need somebody to keep me on task, so it works. So, with a uh, with cyber intelligence and things of this nature, uh, we're not going to hear anything about it. But again, as Samantha B did did point out quite adequately, uh, it's not necessary. This is the equivalent of flying flying a a, a bi wing airplane over and dropping flyers. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's Twitter these days. Just just drop some propaganda, and it'll be picked up. It'll be read by somebody. Some people will throw it away. Some people will take a nail to it and put it on a on a wall somewhere where other people can can get it. And you know they're following the old uh, you know a lie repeated often enough has a grain of truth or something. Well, or so they would like to believe truth. becomes truth. Yes, that's how, how much tinfoil you guys got. <laughs> I've got rolls of it, man. Let's go. Got, all right. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go down down the rabbit hole. You know, it's a startup. <laughs> I need a, I need tin foil drops. Just to, how, know, how do you like that that intro? How much tin foil you got right now? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, you got seatbelts for your ears. Got to take them for a ride. Dave's tin foil corner. Let's go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the the stuff that we're seeing right now the uh, the the kind of upheaval the the rage and. And the, the gathering of folks who want to tear everything down, anarchy, this, and and we've got to replace this government that no longer represents us and stuff like that. This is all stuff that you hear out of countries where the CIA and the KGB has instituted a regime change or, or kicked one off. And it's kind of like coming full circle now to see this stuff happening here. Because uh, this is exactly what we do and what Russia does all over the Middle East, continuously trying to put their guy in power to get better trade agreements, to get yeah. resources. Typical nation building, yeah. Yeah, except that this, instead of nation building, it's uh, tearing down your nearest competitor. Well, you have to destroy what's there so that you can institute what you want. Precisely. Well, they don't have to institute wait, wait. anything. They wait, wait, wait. Uh, why, why do I need the tinfoil? This is just true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting for Not the outlandish thing. Yeah, I'm oh. truly waiting for the thing that's well, mind blowing. The, the the GOP is basically giving themselves full force to to what essentially could be could very well be a KGB plot to destroy this country. Oh, there were those. Uh those reports that the KGB was grooming Trump for like five years or something. There's another report that Trump had a, uh, a secret server that was attached. Yeah. It was linked directly to alpha bank, which is a KGB run bank. <laughs> right. And then once it was yeah. discovered, the server went away and then a new it was one replaced came up. by another one. Yeah. Yeah. Like a week later or something. Um, a few days. Yeah. Why aren't we hearing more about that? Because oh, Hillary gee, I Of course, also, why aren't we hearing more about his uh, his rape allegation cases? And coming uh, up in December, one of them. Uh, well, one's coming up here in November. I think that's the I think that's the rape cases in November. No, and then the it's rape is in December. It's December. So uh, it's Trump going University. Uh, it's the twenty eighth. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and the but, Trump Hotel. Uh, the Trump Tower Canada apparently just uh, just went bankrupt. That's an interesting story, but but uh, actually it, it has very little to do with him other than just management. Mm -hmm. um, but it does it does serve uh, to show more of his business practices as his his businesses are falling down around him as he's here for president. I don't know that this is necessarily good for his brand. Again, looking at certain things, I kind of agree with what some of the more interesting people have said. The reason Trump has not released his tax returns is not because there's something on it like, oh my god, that'll cause him, like, you know, Al Capone to crash, all that kind of stuff. But more the fact of, if it's actually revealed how 
in dire straits he actually is, yeah, it might destroy his own reputation. The other, the more tinfoily version of that is if it's actually revealed that he's been getting regular incremental infusions of cash from uh, Russia, namely KGB sources. Well, also there were a he couple could also Saudi be tried for treason. <laughs> there were a couple of Saudi princesses that, uh, no, prince princes, uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah. that he was also in the pocket of apparently that they were bailing him out because he he was saying that he'd never taken money and then one of them tweeted him. Mm-hmm. Saying, "What about the money I gave you?" So it was just a it was just a you know small loan from a friend. That's right, small loan, small small hundred oh, million dollar loan from my father, small yeah. loan. He can <laughs> just give me there's a there's a movie called um, uh, Head Office from the eighties, I want to say, and it starts off in the Mister Helm, chairman of this of INC Inc. is flying around in his helicopter and he's like, I own this building and that building and that building. When I came here, I had barely $40 million in my pocket. Now I own <laughs> all this. <laughs> yeah. I recall. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is it? What was that? There Was it Head Office? Because I seem to remember that movie, too. Judge that Reinhold. Um... Those are names. Yeah. Eddie Albert, Lorian yeah. Angler, Jane, Jane Seymour. Seymour, Danny DeVito, yeah. Rick Moranis. It's incredible. It's okay. an incredible movie. <laughs> so another one of those, uh, another one of those movies uh, to watch. Yeah. Since uh, you know we, we already mentioned, um, uh, they live. So, mm-hmm. couple couple good ones for this weekend while, while you're uh, trying to figure out what to do and stocking and, up and on your course, tinfoil. With everything else that's been happening in the election, don't forget the wonderful movie that is slowly turning into a documentary, Idiocracy. Yeah. 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 Except that's probably, at this point, the best case scenario for how we could end. But I love I love the fact that Matt Judge has said he's actually hor- absolutely horrified the fact he's seeing his movie literally come to life in front of him. I wouldn't be pleased either, no. <laughs> he's going, no. what the hell? It's all bad. All bad. Okay. But not everything is bad, though it does have tinges of bad. (laughs) Uh, Washington, D.C. has passed, at least approved within their confines, a Death with Dignity Act. Which is wonderful. The city council Mm -hmm. in the nation's capital has overwhelmingly voted for the bill that would allow terminally ill people a medically assisted death. Um... And we've talked about uh, about death with dignity multiple times on the show. You know, our our position on that is fairly firm that we are definitely in favor of uh, of that kind of thing and would like it everywhere. Um, the the problem that I have with this is, is that the insurance companies that want to commit murder. Well, <laughs> that too, but no. In in the case of in the case of Washington D.C. Congress can can basically veto this. Yep. So because this will be a bigger fight. It can be, and they don't have they don't have any states' rights. They are completely at the mercy of Congress, and they also don't get a say. Right, but it will it will force a a vote if they want to intervene. Given the nature of the bill being a literal life or death issue, I believe this is a matter that is best left to the decision of the residents of the District of Columbia by adding it as a referendum on the ballot, Alexander said, noting that the state statute on which the Washington, D.C. measure is modeled, Oregon's, was approved by referendum. Um, hmm. So at least it, it's it's a proven method, and there have not been any uh, any cases where the law has been misused. You know, it, it is a very, a very strict statute. You know, you have to go through. You got to go through proper channels in order to mm. to take this option, basically. So, it's been it's been done firmly, and they're it's it's working. So, um, it's it's one of those things. I would like to see what happens. Um, it could it could go through, and everything be awesome. Then again. 
they could just roll it up and say that, uh, no, we're only for the sanctity of life, which means you have to suffer as long as possible. Yeah. You know, the people talk about we we can't have assisted suicide. We don't allow suicide in this country mm -hmm. under any circumstances whatsoever. Why do you euthanize your dog? Their uh, own yeah. suffering and their quality of life has gone completely to the garbage, the dumps. Yeah. You put them out of their misery. Mm -hmm. But when it's grandpa, <laughs> that that poor son of a bitch is going to suffer. Well, that's the way Mother Teresa would want it. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah, but fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't with Steven's dick either. No. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't with yours, Andy. Thank you. Good. <laughs> we're, we're gonna keep those things safe. Keep keep it far far away from uh, the. Uh, from Mother Teresa. Yeah, the Sisters of Calcutta was it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, just keep, stay away Jesus. from there. Away from there entirely. So I'm I'm not sure how this will work. Um, I hope it just. This is all we needed to hear from it. And yay! They've got it now. And they, and the people that live within the District of Washington, D.C. are okay. Can do these mm -hmm. things. I'm kind of worried about the people in Washington, D.C. Because <laughs> they're so shat upon by Congress. And they, they just... I, I wouldn't live there. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a few blocks over, you could live in Maryland. It'd be fine. You could live in Virginia. It'd be fine. But no, you, you're stuck in Washington D.C., where you know the the mayor was you know a crackhead forever. Yeah. <laughs> Be smart, live slightly outside the borders, and just commute. Honestly, it's yeah. also cheaper that way. Yeah. So it's interesting. Mm. D.C. is definitely their little plaything, and they don't allow any good things to really happen there. So oh. if if it works, awesome. Yeah, I suppose what that would mean is that then maybe individual cities could then come up with death with the acts? There's no mm. reason they can't. I mean because then it would be it would be something that was passed and is in practice that they could bring up in court law mm -hmm. as an example of something that's happening. But would it conflict with say a state law? State law would would trump it but you know it would depend. Which I can on, see, but I, I mean, I can see that causing a problem if that were the case. If it were, because for, if it were explicitly forbidden, right? Well, what I'm thinking of, and, and this is, um, you know, similar but not necessarily the same thing. I'm thinking of Jeb Bush and um, Terry Schiavo is what I'm thinking of. Yes, mm. yeah. The Terry Schiavo case was, you know, terribly sad here in in the state of Florida, where basically uh, uh, Governor Bush. Forced her to be a vegetable for an awfully long time. Until he could no longer fight those forces. Yeah. So his delicate sensibilities would not be... His delicate sensibilities would not be offended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Grumble. Mm. Grumble. More grumbling. Yeah. But yes, that's what I was thinking about when I was asking, you know, uh, state law versus uh, a city passing an act. Yeah. That would be an interesting thing to ask... Uh, Ask an actual attorney. So we'll have to do that. I'll have to. I'll have to ask somebody. Get some, get one on the show for all our legal questions. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I I got an idea over there, and, and right. we'll, we'll we'll chat about that later. But uh, I think I got a source possibly. Okay, so that will. Uh, I think that'll do it for good ideas. <laughs>